Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shannon Cornthwaite. I have an associate's degree in psychology sociology, a bachelor's degree in psychology and criminal justice, and I am currently working on my master's degree in clinical counseling. I am not currently a licensed therapist, counselor, or otherwise. Uh, however, I will be in the next year and a half or so, hopefully, as long as I pass everything. But today I wanted to talk about mental health and the goth subculture. For those of you who don't know, I have self-identified as goth since I was 15 years old. That's about 25 years now. There have been times during that period when I haven't really dressed the part, but I have always identified as goth. And during some research recently for my multicultural counseling class, I came upon a blog. It's Unwanted Life. It's about alternative subcultures, goths, and mental health. And it was published on July 1st, 2020. And in the post, the author quotes a 2015 study by Bose et al. Let me just read this little excerpt real quick. In 2015, The Lancet published a study by Bose et al., 2015, that kicked off a media storm about how being goth puts you at more risk of depression and self-harm. Even though the study admitted that it hadn't factored in a whole range of individual, family, and social variables that could have influenced the results, they also quite clearly stated that their observational findings can't claim that being goth increased the risk of risk of depression and or self-harm. Their findings also showed that the majority of people who partially, 9%, or fully identified as goth, 18%, didn't report suffering from depression. But unfortunately, that didn't stop the press. Now, she links all the uh, references uh, here. So I followed the link to the original study. Uh, and I went down to the results section, which is where you find the actual results of the research and the studies. In this, let's see, it says, I'm guessing this is 10,962 adolescents because they got 10 and then a space 962. I'm not sure if they mean 10,962 or if 10 was some identifier or something and then 962. But it says adolescents in the Alsback study were invited to attend the 15 year clinic visit. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing it's 10,000 because it says. Uh, of whom 5,515 attended. Average age of 15 years old, 5,357 completed the survey about subculture identification. From the eight subcultures identified, the goth subculture was recognized by all adolescents interviewed. The most frequently endorsed subcultures were sporty, popular skaters, shoves, and goths. At the 18-year visit, 3,694 adolescents attended and provided outcome data, mean age 17 to 18 years old. Uh, overall subculture identify, uh, subculture identification and outcome data at 18 years were available of 3,694 adolescents. Participants lost to follow up between the 15 and 18 year visits were no more likely to self identify as goth uh, to have self-harmed by the age of 15 years, or to have shown high levels of depressive symptoms at 15 years of age uh, than were those with data uh, for all variables. So what this means is when they went back and they interviewed these teens at the, ages of, at the age of 18, they no longer identified as goth, and they no longer showed high levels of depression. Find this interesting, because there is clearly a correlation between goth and depression. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that being goth is the causation of the depression. Uh, oftentimes, particularly in the media, uh, it gets confused that correlation means causation. Uh, just because you have a correlation doesn't mean that that correlation that there's a one of the variables is the causation of the other variable. Uh, correlation doesn't equal causation. If we look at it at more of a general level, I'll use myself as an example. When I came into the goth subculture, I was depressed. I had come from a school where I was bullied severely. Uh, I would come home uh, with concussions, 
broken bone, broken collarbone, um, abused violently and sadistically. I would even be uh, verbally abused by teachers who said that the reason I was being bullied is because my it was my fault. In fact, I have right here my fifth grade psych evaluation, and in it, uh, it's uh, the psychologist for the school. Uh, actually says Shannon is described as difficult to motivate and ha as having few friends. According to his teacher, he complained that others bother him, but does not recognize that he often instigates the problem. And what they mean by that I often instigate it, the way I acted, the way I dressed, um, being lower middle class, I would often, at the time Kmart was a big thing. Um, in that school particularly, people looked down on those who bought clothes from all or from Kmart. Um, also hand-me-down clothes, garage sale clothes, stuff like that. Um, that's what they meant by instigates. Plus, I am also uh, self-determined uh, autistic, and so I do have a lot of personality traits that, and stimming activities I do that would have likely rubbed some people the wrong way, and they made fun of me for it, uh, stuff like that. So it, it was a very abusive school district. And so when I switched over uh, right before my freshman year, that's when I switched over to goth. I was the only student in a school of around 300 students who identified as goth. There were other alternatives, alternative subcultures. Um, you had the potheads, you had some uh, new metal heads, the NU metal. Uh, heads, um, skaters, but those other crowds just kind of blended in with everyone else. I stood out. I was the only openly goth at that school. It was a farming community, so uh, a lot of country boys went to school there, but I was the only open goth. And so I developed a reputation, but I slowly began to come out of my depression because I found who I was with goth. I felt more like myself. And judging from the videos I've watched on the subject, videos by uh, Angela Benedict, a lot of people found who they are when they became goth. And so to say that there's a correlation between goth and depression isn't really telling the whole story. A lot of times people experience the depression and that is their uh, slow introduction into goth. They begin dr dressing in darker colors, and then they begin listening to the music, and then they, or they begin reading the literature or watching the films. A lot of people will say that goth is a music-centered subculture. I don't disagree, but I don't agree either. Because goth, even though there wasn't a word for it, has been around a lot longer than the music. Goth is a lifestyle. Edgar Allan Poe was quite possibly one of the original goths, you know, as we know them today. Um, Mary Shelley, uh, Bram Stoker, people like that. Very likely some of the original goths. And there, there have always been these subcultures and people dressing a certain way. Through, it, it wasn't until the music came along that it got a name, but pick up any uh, Adam's Family comic strip or TV show or film, it, it would be hard to argue that they are not a family of goths. They are. They are very much a family of goths. They're creepy and kooky, mysterious and ooky, uh, but they're goths, just without the music. Now, that isn't to say that goth isn't a music-centered subculture. I think it's it's different for everybody. You know, there may be a large majority of the subculture who gathers around the music. I like a lot of the music. Some of it I'm not into, but a lot of the music I can get behind. I really enjoy. But for me, being a film buff and a literature buff, it's been more about the film and literature. Uh, it's been more about goth as an art form uh, altogether. And if you look at it, film literature, music, all three are similar art forms. We need to stop gatekeeping and say you have to listen to the music in order to be considered goth. These three things 
music, literature, film, as well as actual canvas art or sculpted art. There are all art forms. So to say that goth is just about the music or that that's what it's uh, centered around is completely ignoring all these other art forms. So I would be one to suggest that goth is an art-based subculture. And when we find that subculture that we relate the most to, that's when our mental health begins to correct itself. When we find a tribe of our own, when we feel more like ourselves, that's when our mental health starts to course correct. So to say that there's a correlation between goth and depression, that's only part of the whole. Just like music is just part of the whole that is goth. Yes, a lot of goths suffer from depression, but it's usually they come into it with depression. And then the deeper they get into the subculture, the more that depression tends to leave them. Um, some, you know, they don't stay goth. They, you know, find it's a stepping stone to finding who they truly are. And that's when the depression kind of leaves them when they find who they truly are and find their tribe. Now, depression is the biggest mental health diagnosis that is associated with goths, but there are others as well. You have anxiety. Um, there's the neurological developmental condition known as autism or any neurodivergence, uh, ADHD, um, Tourette's, personality disorders, even though personality disorders don't, can't be diagnosed until after around the age of 25, when the brain is fully developed. Personality disorders are associated with goth and other different disorders. But I think, like I said, it's when we find our place, find our tribe, find where we belong. That's when symptoms of these disorders begin to alleviate when we when we feel the most comfortable with ourselves we can be happy for ourselves and show that happiness to the world so just because there's a correlation between goth and depression or any other subculture and mental health disorder does not mean that that subculture is the causation of that disorder. It just means there's a correlation. And most of the time, that disorder existed before the subculture and begins to go away once the individual finds himself. That's it for today's video. If you would like more uh, videos diving into mental health and goth, uh, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you think of this video. I am going to do a lot more mental health videos, um, but I want to try something different, uh, kind of steer away from being a BPD and autism centered channel and just focus on all aspects of mental health. Um, so yeah, uh, remember I am not a licensed counselor at this time. I simply have an associate's degree in psychology, sociology, a bachelor's degree in psychology, clinical, uh, and criminal justice. And I'm currently working on my master's for clinical counseling. Uh, I am not a mental health professional by any means. So take everything I said with a grain of salt. And I absolutely am not an expert on the goth subculture. I have only considered myself goth for 25 years. And that's all there is to it. No one can really profess that they're an expert. And no one should be gatekeeping. Um, definitions are different for everybody. Um, he, even the dictionary has different definitions for the word goth. Um, so take, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, if you like my video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends. Take care, everyone. 
make sure to head on over to Amazon and check out one of my six books currently available. If you enjoyed this video, check out the others in the playlist. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share.